And I knew the highway patrol officer. He knew me. And I thought I was ready. I flunked my test. And you say, I get to take it again this next Tuesday. Oh, dear. How can that be a testimony if you flunked your test? I have been able to witness and testify more at my bus garage since that happened than I ever have. And I'll explain to you how it happened. I get out there, we're in a 40 foot bus and you gotta parallel park the bus. I parallel park the bus, I pass. You have to do a test where it's lock to lock, where you take your steering wheel and lock, you got a line, you're on this side of the line, you lock the steering wheel, when your bus moves to a certain point, you lock it again the other way, and your bus has to end up on the other side of the line within 18 inches, 12 to 18 <coughs> inches of the line. I passed that. Well, I mean, the only thing left to do is what they call a gradual. That's where you're on this side of the line, and you gradually move your bus over to the other side of the line. And you gotta be within 12 to 18 inches on the other side of the line. I never even practiced it because that's the simplest maneuver there is. So, you know, why do you need to practice that? So, I, when I went out there and practiced before, I practiced the parallel parking. I practiced the lock to lock. And I didn't practice the gradual. What do you want to practice the gradual for? You know what I mean? That's the simple one. I get out there, do my gradual, and I end up on the line. I missed it. The highway patrol officer, give me another chance. He said, okay, Steve, we'll let you, uh, 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 we'll give you another chance. So I pull up there. I missed it again. This time, I was over 18 inches away from the line. He said, Steve, we're going to have to do this again. And so, I mean, I'm depressed, I guess you want to call it. I'm uh, a little upset uh, because of what happened. So I head back to the bus garage. My supervisor, she's there, and she asked me, well, Steve, you passed. I said, no, I didn't pass. She said, no way. You know, I mean, I could have seen it. I said, no, I didn't, I didn't make it. She said, well, what happened? I said, you won't believe what I failed on. She said, the parallel parking? I said, no. The lock, the lock, no. Well, what'd you fail on? The gradual. She said, no way. I mean, that was, that was her answer. I said, yep, I could not believe it. And she said, well, what happened? I said, I want to tell you what I think coming back. You know, I, I drive back from the airport and I drop the uh, highway patrol officer off. And then I head back uh, to the bus barn with my uh, bus. On the way back, I'm thinking in my mind, you know, what, what happened? What, what exactly uh, happened? So we get there and I explained to her and, and I told her it was a gradual and, and she couldn't believe it. She said, no way. I said, yep. And I told her, I said, what I think, I honestly feel that the Holy Spirit was showing me I need to take care of the small details in my life. And it makes so much sense. You know, sometimes it's the small things that if we ignore and we don't pay attention to, they begin to build up and they get worse and they're worse. And the Holy Spirit just seemed to show me that it's the little details that we don't pay attention to sometimes that will wind up biting us. And that happened to me. I went out there. The next day, you know, they let me take a, a school bus out and practice all I want. <laughs> and, and I'm telling you, I nailed that thing six times in a row. It, it had, I mean, how can you, uh, so anyway, I've been practicing. So when, it, when me and that highway patrol officer goes back out again, I'm even going to be able to witness to him. After it, after I get past, because I, you know, I don't know how he feels about uh, the uh, religious part of it. But the guys at the bus garage, when they come to me and say, "Well, Steve, did you pass?" I said, "No," 
and I tell them I plunk undergraduate, they all say, no way. You know, I mean that that it just it just doesn't make sense that you would and then I explain to them what I think happened, that God was trying to show me to pay attention to the small details. And I've been able to witness to just about everybody down at that bus garage. Just, I mean, it has been a blessing. You know, in all things, God deserves praise. And no matter what kind of trial and tribulation we're going through, I mean, God will work it to our good. And I think me failing that simple test, I mean, I could have failed the parallel parking and it wouldn't have been that big a deal. I could have failed the lock to lock, you know, and because a lot of them have failed on that. Nobody down the bus garage has ever failed to graduate. <laughs> Nobody's failed that because that's the simple. You quit laughing. That's the simple maneuver. But I did. And I because I failed that simple test, I've been able to witness to everybody down at the bus garage. It has been a blessing to me. That's a, that's a failure for you. But God turned it into a blessing. God will take your failures and turn them into blessings. Amen. Okay, that, my testimony is done. Now that we're going to try a little bit of the uh, uh, Word of God here. In uh, Mark, this is another thing. You know, uh, uh, this week, last week, or the last time I was up here, and uh, I've been struggling with these, these messages, trying to come up with something that I think <coughs> would benefit uh, the body and uh, uh, it's been hard uh, uh, for me. Uh, I've been struggling. Anyway, Great. I want you to know if, some, if somebody wants to come up here, I mean, I'll say more than gladly let you. I'll, I'll sit out there with the rest of you. Okay, we're going to go to Mark chapter 5. And I think once we get finished with this, and uh, uh, I'll explain to you what my... Uh, what I feel the Holy Spirit has laid on my heart uh, for this chapter, uh, it it blessed me. So I mean, these last couple of weeks, I've had so many blessings. I guess I got to share them with you guys. But anyway, it did me. Chapter five. I know there's 43 verses, but we're going to read the whole thing, and then I'll come back and uh, uh, comment on what I've done. And they came over unto the other side of the sea into the country of the Gadarians. And when he was come out of the ship immediately, there met him out of the tombs a man with an unclean spirit who had his dwelling among the tombs and no man could bind him, no, not with chains. Because that he had been often bound bound with chains, had been plucked asunder by him, and the fetters broken in pieces, neither could any man tame him. And always, night and day, he was in the mountains and in the tombs, crying and cutting himself with stones. But when he saw Jesus afar off, he ran and worshipped him, and cried with a loud voice, and said, What have I to do with thee, Jesus, thou Son of the Most High God? I adjure thee by God that thou torment me not. For he, had, for he said unto him, Come out of the man, thou unclean spirit. And he asked him, What is thy name? And he answered, saying, My name is Legion, for we are many. And he besought him much that he would not send them away out of the country. Now there was there nigh unto the mountains a great herd of swine feeding. And all the devils besought him, saying, Send us into the swine, that we may enter into them. And forthwith Jesus gave them leave. And the unclean spirits went out and entered into the swine, and the herd ran violently down a steep place into the sea. They were about two thousand and were choked in the sea. And they, fed, and they that fed the swine fled, and told it in the city and in the country. And they went out to see what, was, what it was that was done. And they came to Jesus, and, and see him that was possessed 
with the devil and had the legion and sitting and clothed and in, in his right mind and they were afraid. And they that saw it told them how it befell to him that was possessed with the devil and also concerning the swine. And they began to pray him to depart out of their coast. And when he was coming to the ship, he that had been possessed with the devil prayed him that he might be with him. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. And he departed and began to publish in Decapolis how great things Jesus had done for him, and all men did marvel. And when Jesus was passed over again by the ship and to the other side, much people gathered unto him, and he was nigh unto the sea. And behold, there cometh one out of the ruler, one of the rulers of the synagogue, Jairus by name. And when he was, and when he saw him, he fell at his feet, and besought him greatly, saying, My little daughter lieth at the point of death. I pray thee, come and lay thy hands on her, that she may be healed, and she shall live. And Jesus went with him, and much people followed him and thronged him. And a certain woman, which had an issue of blood twelve years, and had suffered many things of many physicians, and had spent all that she had, and was nothing better, but rather grew worse. When she had heard of Jesus, came in the press behind and touched his garment. For she said, If I may touch but his clothes, I shall be whole. And straightway the fountain of her blood was dried up, and she felt in her body that she was healed and that of that plague. And Jesus immediately, knowing in himself that virtue had gone out of him, turned him about in the press and said, Who touched my clothes? And his disciples said unto him, Thou seest the multitude thronging thee, and sayest thou, Who touched me? And he looked round about to see her that had done this thing. But the woman, fearing and trembling, knowing what was done in her, came and fell down before him and told him all the truth. And he said unto her, Daughter, thy faith hath made thee whole. Go in peace, and be whole of thy plague. While he had yet spake, there came from the ruler of the synagogue's house certain which said, Thy daughter is dead. Why troublest thou the master any further? As soon as Jesus heard the word that was spoken, he saith unto the ruler of the synagogue, Be not afraid, only believe. And he suffered no man to follow him, save Peter and James and John the brother of James. And he cometh to the house of the ruler of the synagogue, and seeth the tumult and them <coughs> that wept and wailed greatly. And when he was come in, he saith unto them, Why make ye this ado, and weep? The damsel is not dead, but sleepeth. And they laughed him to scorn. But when he had put them out, all out, he, talk, he taketh the father and the mother of the damsel, and them that were with him, and entereth in where the damsel was lying, and took the damsel by the hand and said unto her, <coughs> Talitha Kumi, which is, being interpreted, damsel, I say unto thee, arise. And straightway the damsel arose and walked, for she was of the age of twelve years, and they were astonished with great astonishment. And he charged them straight, straightly that no man should know it, and commanded that something should be given her to eat. Now, this whole chapter talks about three different times that Jesus dealt with three different people. You had one one person that was possessed of a, a devil. You had a damsel or a, a, a woman that was uh, uh, had an issue of blood for twelve years, and you had a, a ruler of the synagogue coming to Jesus. All three of them came uh, to Jesus for something. And the woman that had the issue of blood for 12 years, she was unclean for 12 years. If you think about it, whenever a, uh, a Jewish woman 
had the issue of blood. She was supposed to be unclean for seven days after. And she had had it for 12 years. For 12 years, she was unclean. For 12 years, she hadn't gone to the temple. She hadn't associated uh, with uh, other people. She was considered unclean. You had the person that was possessed of the devils. He was unclean. He was out. But Jesus was in an, another. He wasn't in the Jewish nation then. He was in uh, the country that was close by the... Uh, uh, yeah, Galileans. I mean, uh, it was not the Jewish uh, people, and he he went in to those people. Let's let's look what he went in and he told the the person. This is the only time he's ever told someone that he did something for. Let's see what Jesus told him to do. On his page. Howbeit Jesus suffered him not, but saith unto him, Go home to thy friends, and tell them how great things the Lord hath done for thee, and hath had compassion on thee. This is the only time he told the person that he had done something to, to go and tell everybody. And, you know, if, if you think about it, he was telling this man to go and spread the news. Uh, that what Jesus, what the Lord had done for him. This is a, uh, uh, as far as, uh, you know, my thinking, he was telling them eventually the unclean, the uh, Gentiles were going to be offered what Jesus had to offer. This was a foretaste of what was coming. But he told them to go and spread the news. And he had never told any of the others that he had healed this, this girl, he, Jesus told him, he said, and he charged them straightly that no man should know it. He told, told them, don't tell anybody, don't spread the news. And he was in his own country. The news spread, we know it did because of what we heard, but Jesus told them, don't do it. And what impressed me about the, the whole thing, we had a ruler of the synagogue. We, we had a woman that was unclean for 12 years. We had a, uh, a possessed person that dealt. And if you read some of the history, the Roman legion that was in the Jewish nation at that time, their banner had the banner of a pig, a, uh, a, a boar. That was on their banner. And he sent these swine, he let them go into these pigs, these boars. And what these boars did, they ran and they did the same thing that happened to the uh, 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 Pharaoh's army whenever the Red Sea was parted. They went in and they were swallowed up. And if you think about it, Jesus had the power to remove that Roman legion from the Jewish nation. He had the power to do it Amen. and he showed them I sent them into those swine and those swine went and drowned. He had the ability to drown every one of those Roman soldiers that was there. He had the power to do it. Yes, he did. And if you look at, at you know, some of these stories, they wasn't able to put together all the things that happened. But one thing that I got out of uh, uh, all of this, and, and this to me is is the point of the whole thing. You you had the woman that was unclean. You had the man that you had the the one ruler of the synagogue. Now he was highly esteemed person. He he was one of the rulers of the synagogue. And he went and he fell down at Jesus' feet. The woman that had the issue of blood fell down at Jesus' feet. The person that was possessed of the devil fell down at Jesus' feet. I want to tell you, if you're doing what you're supposed to be doing, if you're at the feet of Jesus, you can never look down on someone else. Amen. It's impossible for you to look down on someone if you're down at the feet of Jesus worshiping like you should be worshiping. If you're ever at a point where you're looking down on someone else because of the condition that they're in, 
then you better turn around and take a look at yourself because you're not where you ought to be. If you're down at the feet of Jesus worshiping, there's no way you can ever look down on someone else. Amen. The condition that they're in. And that's what I got out of this. And that's what the Holy Spirit seemed to, to show me. I know it, it's short and it's sweet, but I just, I mean, I have been blessed these last two weeks. And I've struggled harder than I've ever struggled trying to get something out of the uh, Bible. And, and then sometimes we just have to back up, bow at Jesus' feet and stand and let the Holy Spirit work in your life. Amen. I mean, every trial and tribulation you're going through, God will work it sure. to your good. I hope I passed my test this week. <laughs> I've been going out practicing pretty good. So I think I'm going to be all right. And I'm going to be able to witness to that highway patrol officer uh, when it happens. Well, I, I know you're, you're, I mean, to me, I, I got more out of this week, even though it's short and sweet. I got nothing else. Uh, uh, hopefully, uh, you'll, you'll go. You know, whenever we're, uh, uh, you know that you're filled with the Holy Spirit. When, when you, you have joy in your heart all the time. I, when I'm driving that bus, I'm singing songs. When, when I'm uh, walking through uh, the bus garage, uh, uh, pounding on tires, doing my pre-trip and everything, uh, I'm, I'm singing songs. And my, you you got to have the joy of the Lord, uh, giving thanks. You give thanks all the time to God. Thank you, dear Lord God, for, for my life. Thank Amen. you for everything that I have. And, and be submissive. We have to be submissive to Jesus to the Holy Spirit, to God. We've got, I mean, if you can uh, have those three things, you know you've got the Holy Spirit in you and it's working in your life. Hallelujah. God bless each one of you. If there's, uh, do we have any other uh, uh, testimonies anybody wants to give? I mean, I gave my testimony this morning. I mean, I'm, I, I, I was glad to give it this morning. I was looking forward uh, to be in here. Brother Wayne, I wasn't supposed to talk today. He, he was supposed to talk today. He's getting us out of turn here. Maybe it was the Holy Spirit knew that I needed, I had something to say. <laughs> I love it. Man, it's good. So, but it's still a struggle and it's hard for me to get up here and try to get something out of this Bible to share with you because I'm always afraid that, you know, I, I fall short of what I need to do. But anytime you want to replace me, I'll be glad to help you. See, the Bible says the kingdom of God suffers violence and the violent take it before. you got to push your way in too. Ask all of that feeling. And when you get through with it, then you come up with something that you did this morning at the feet of Jesus. You're there with your confession and you're not looking at other people's faults or sin. Hopefully I'll pay attention more and uh, not have to flunk a test <laughs> before he can talk to me. But he'll use every, every trial and tribulation we go through to help us bring us through. Amen. Okay, that's all, Sally. <laughs> Wait a oh, minute now. Can I? I'm going to make some announcements here. Okay. We're going to have Thanksgiving dinner on the 14th. That's two weeks from the day. And the uh, majority of it will be purchased, but my wife has insisted that some of you want to bring your favorite dishes and whatever. Whatever you want to bring, you bring it. I know that Rhonda will um, put it in with everything else. But on the 14th, we're going to have our Thanksgiving dinner. And we've got a lot to be thankful for. Amen. Whenever you picked out these three parables or stories, 
a question, did they actually happen? I believe they did, but a lot of people don't. But when you read the Bible, you'll find out that it records things that happened in a small group. The 3,000 added to the church for one day, but they didn't say anything about them. But there was nine one day, and it said something about them. And the woman one day that you brought out this morning. So on the 21st, you're going to be gone. He said he's moving to Arkansas, and so. Uh, no, she won't let me. She won't let me move to Arkansas. <laughs> anyway, on the 21st, we're going to have a baptismal service, and uh, we already have three people who are going to be baptized. If anyone else wants to be baptized, you let me know. So uh, Ron is going to get the baptistry cleaned out, filled up with water. And we are going to go on just like we had a church full of people because where two or three are gathered together, there I am also. Amen. So this is what we came to the church this morning for, is to hear you talk about three different incidents where people, when they got their mind off of themselves and bowed at the feet of Jesus, they found an answer that solved their problem, gave them a solution. That's exactly what we can do too. Amen. So we're going to have a Thanksgiving, and then the next week we'll have water baptism. Can I have someone come up and let's receive the Sunday morning tithes and offering? Dear Lord, we ask your blessings on this offering. We ask your blessings on those that have to give and those that have not to give. We ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. Do we have any birthdays we're celebrating today? Morning to come to church. Who? Lou. Lou? So uh, Lucinda doesn't uh, said she'd let me know. I don't know if she went back home or if she thinks she might have got lost. So we'll find out. Has she been able to call her? Or? Well, she hasn't got back to me, so I don't, I don't know what she's done. I don't know. Well, let's all stand and we'll sing There is a River. Mm -hmm. 